Jodi is a social and brand strategist. She elevates personalities and brands by helping them craft thriving online businesses via value-based content, which she currently has a coach as well, so I think it's important. So give me a round of applause. Today as well. Um, I'm really, I feel really blessed to be here today because it's Persian, it's Persian New Year, so I'm starting the New Year right with positive energy. So yeah, thank you for having me. How's everyone today? Before I get into it. Yeah. So just before I introduce myself, I want everyone who has ever felt like they are either not good enough to, you know pursue their dreams or they might not feel like they're good enough to like have the career that they want to eventually get into. Has anyone ever felt like that? If you have, put your hand up. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people. Everybody look around the room. Okay, so yeah, you're not the only one. So actually, up to 70% of people experience what is any kind of dream, and that's called imposter syndrome. And what that means is that you don't believe in your source. Now, why you don't believe in your source, I don't know, because us as humans, we're all amazing. We all have something you need to offer. So, and I want to get into what entrepreneurs feel about themselves. So actually, 87% of entrepreneurs actually admit that they experience imposter syndrome themselves. So, into my journey, um, a brief history of me. I was born in East London, went to school at Bethnal Green, moved to the countryside in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by no diversity, which was very interesting, like having a Cockney accent and going to live in the countryside. <laughs> then I came back to London when I was 17, uh, moved to South London, so I'm now an immigrant of South London. Um, and I was known as the girl with no talent, um, I had no confidence, I was terrible at school, I literally failed every single class, I think I left school with four GCSEs, didn't even get maths GCSE, which is just amazing because back then when you went to school, if you weren't good at school, then you're not good at anything. Like you're not smart, you're not intelligent. There's no prospects for you basically. Um, and because of that, um, I had a lot of self-esteem issues growing up. I just constantly, because I was constantly told by teachers, you're not going to go anywhere in life. You're not talented. There's nothing that you're good at. I was just kind of, kind of set at that point. And then I left school with only four GS GCSEs, like I said. Um, I went to college, I did a BTEC. BTEC is cool, okay? Like, I don't, some, there's a joke in the millennials that say, like, oh, you're doing a BTEC because you're not good, but really and truly, BTEC is really, really good because it's a vocational course and it, like, sets you up properly for a career, so that's something to look up to. But I went to college, I did a BTEC, and I managed to get myself into university. God knows how I managed to get myself into university without a GCSE, but Woo! thank you. <laughs> um, I was really good at writing emails, so I managed to get myself through writing an email. And during the time that I was at college and school, my mum, who sat here, <laughs> she's amazing. <laughs> My mum was a single mum of three kids. Um, she worked a full time job in, in East London and she had her own business as well to kind of like make sure that we were set up and we looked after. And my mum was actually one of my biggest inspirations to want to start my own business because I thought if my mum can do this, being a single mum, she's an immigrant from Iran, so she wasn't born here. So you know, you have different privileges. I kind of saw that as an inspiration and I thought, do you know what, if my mum can do it, I can do it. It doesn't matter what people are telling me, it doesn't matter if I'm being told at school, you're not good at this, you're not good at that, you're not book smart. I knew that I had some sort of talent within me, which is something that I was exploring earlier, later in life. Um, so I went to university, I was still failing everything. I think I reset every exam at least three times. You can only reset, reset exams twice, but I managed to negotiate with the department to let me do it three times. So I left, I graduated, and then got into my career. Um, so I went to university. I was still failing everything. I think I reset every exam at least three times. You can only reset, reset exams twice, but I managed to negotiate with the department to let me do it three times. So when I was in the corporate world, I kept getting fired. 
Um, and then one day, my twin brother said to me, Sean, do you think you have ADHD? Because I think I have ADHD. And kind of at the time, like when you're younger, mental health had a really big stigma. Um, you didn't really want to be known to have ADHD. You don't want to be known to be here in dimension at all. So I went and got tested at 26 years old. Um, and I discovered that I had ADHD. And it wasn't, it wasn't me not being smart enough or good enough at things. It's because I wasn't set up to be able to be successful in like the society that we were in sort of thing. Um, so I investigated, you know, what is the best jobs, careers, skills that are really good for neurodivergent people, ADHD people, sales, social media, marketing, content creation, like really, really creative jobs is what's really good for people with ADHD because we're practical people and we're very visual people. So, after I got fired from my corporate job, I started my own business, which is the business that I have today. It's a social media marketing agency. Um, it's a six-figure business. I have, company, I have clients across the US and the UK. And what got me through everything that I went through, what got me to the point today is really, really believing in myself and looking at the bigger picture. And what... Even what Kanye says, he says, I believe, my, I believe in myself like a five-year-old believes in himself. Mm -hmm. So you really, even though you have so many obstacles in the way, you really, really, really have to believe that you can do it no matter what. It wasn't me not being smart enough or good enough at things. It's because I wasn't set up to be able to be successful in like the society that we were in sort of thing. Um, so I investigated, you know, what is the best jobs, careers, skills that are really good for neurodivergent people, ADHD people, sales, social media, marketing, content creation, like really, really creative jobs is what's really good for people with ADHD because we're practical people and we're very visual people. So you really, even though you have so many obstacles in the way, you really, really, really have to believe that you can do it no matter what. Yeah, that's basically the lesson that I wanted to give. Um, I have coaching now. When I got diagnosed with ADHD, I got coaching, which has been helping me throughout my career, teaching me about communication because I had terrible communication before. And it's a really big, important part of my life, having communication skills and then also business. Um, and if it wasn't for like my coach and mentor, I think I would have probably stacked in my business by now, but it's like having someone supporting you and helping you and guiding you is super important. So, yeah, that's the story. Anyone have any quick questions? What's next to you, Simon? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I really want to get to a point where I can just have people managing my business for me. <laughs> Thank you very much.